do recognise that a lot of what I cover on the smartphone show is hardware, the glitzy, shiny bit that we all lust after. But at the end of the day, it's software that makes just as big a difference between a lousy smartphone and a good one, and third-party applications in particular, or at least those that aren't actually built in when you buy the hardware. Everyone's use is different, and we each have a different software favourite that we simply must be able to run, whether it's a game or a business essential. As the main hardware review in this programme is of a Windows Mobile smartphone, and with my review of the UIQ3 powered W960 in the last show, I wanted to keep things balanced with a detailed look at the must-have applications for S60. What would I install on a brand new smartphone? What would I recommend as value for money? I guess work should come before pleasure, otherwise I'm going to be in big trouble. The most expensive thing you can buy for S60 is probably the full upgrade of the built-in quick office at up to £30 in the worst case, going for the latest editing version on Nokia N series, which normally only has the oldest read-only version. If you don't absolutely need to edit Word, Excel and PowerPoint documents, then just skip this item. But if you do need to get editing, then don't plump for one of the older upgrades available. Instead, bite the bullet and go for the full latest V5 release. Not only do you get Office 2007 compatibility, you also get the maximum in editing functionality, the best possible desktop round trip sync, and a myriad of tweaks and bug fixes under your belt. I know they didn't pay me for this plug. The next part of any power user's business kit should be handy base. As with QuickOffice, make sure you get the very latest version, in this case 4.0 Build 5 as I, as I speak this. Way beyond a simple card file, HandyBase is a proper power user's database management system. I use that phrase to frighten off beginners. If you've no idea what I'm talking about, then move on. For anybody who's been looking for a decent database, though, this has everything from fields to views to forms to filters. And most importantly of all, there's a desktop client letting you construct and import databases under Windows and then copy them across to your smartphone ready-built, or vice versa, if you want. The final part of any serious use of a smartphone should be management of confidential data, uh, pins, passwords, server addresses, accounts, security questions, and so on. Although there are dozens of utilities that claim to handle all this, at the S60 end, only one performs a full sync to a desktop version. With HandySafe, I can enter new secret data in the Windows client and do a full two-way sync to any S60 smartphone. This saves a lot of typing and is pretty foolproof. Time to go online, and don't worry, virtually everything from here on in is totally free. S60 Web is pretty powerful in its own way, but it can suck up the megabytes when you stray onto full web pages, and it can be a bit slow uh, with heavy pages. Uh, especially with a busy data connection. Instead, make sure you've got Opera Mini 4 installed. It uses a lot of RAM, but no more than web, and for most image-heavy pages, it's quite a bit faster. All the magic happens on Opera's servers, which translate the page you want into something more palatable to the smartphone. Note that some interactive sites may not work properly, but the rest of the time, Opera Mini is fabulous. Also working online, need I mention Google Maps? Oh, go on then. Late last year, Google released a proper native version of this for S60, complete with GPS support, should you have an N95, N2, or E90, etc. And with cell tower-based positioning, if you don't have a GPS built in, with worldwide maps, satellite images, and route calculation, if your data tariff can stand it, then make sure you install this great freebie. MTube is possibly the most awesome S60 application ever created, giving you a fast native program that delves into the innards of YouTube and offers every single video at full quarter VGA resolution, as opposed to the stingy MMS quality from the official YouTube Java app. Even better, MTube supports auto-rotation on some devices. MTube is a godsend for bored children, I can testify, or bored adults, come to that. And if your overworked 3G data connection wasn't being hammered enough, if you've any sense you'll use Wi-Fi most of the time like me if available, I just have to mention Fring. Working with Skype, MSN Messenger, ICQ, Google Talk, Twitter, AIM and Yahoo, this totally free application lets you maintain instant messaging conversations with all your friends and you can call them using voice over IP. And it's still for free, apart from the aforementioned uh, data costs of course. Still more bits and bytes over the air with Nokia's free internet radio. Uh, on the whole, you can ignore the compatibility warnings on the site. It works with just about any S60 smartphone and gives you limitless access to internet radio stations around the world. Quite literally, a genre or a style for everybody's taste. No BBC, though, yet. Back offline now. Whew. The also free Moby Pocket Reader is always a good bet for sticking on your smartphone. The desktop experience is getting slicker and slicker, and it's a doddle to load up free ebooks on any mobile device with only a couple of clicks, or of course to even buy them to keep you going during an upcoming journey. 
you can make up your own hypertext ebooks too. Here's my own Trivopedia that you can download if you fancy it. It's great for pub quizzes and general fact look up. Finally, maybe it's my amateur programming route, so maybe it's just that there are some cool novelties and mini-apps out there, especially good for showing off down the pub. But installing Python, the programming and scripting language, is pretty much essential these days, along with must-have extras like S60's accelerometer plugin. Put it all together, not only if you've got a system in which you can write just about anything, this is my own musician app, which is invaluable when practicing with my band, and here's another little something, perfect for refreshing the parts that other applications just can't reach. Ah! That's better. I've always made an effort to get my hands on Palm's hardware, whatever else the rush or pressures out of loyalty to the way they led the PDA, an emerging smartphone industry from 1998 to about 2003, with their organiser and then their handspring created Trio line. But Palm OS as it was then is now virtually dead in the water, and Palm started making Windows Mobile Trios like this at 750 a couple of years ago. The Trio 500V, V for Vodafone in this case, who have an exclusive deal for a while, is their smallest and lightest Trio yet. But can it match up to the latest devices from Nokia, HTC, RAM and Sony Ericsson? First impressions are excellent with a metallic finish on the main control keys, a nice flush screen and a usable, if rather fiddly, mm -hmm. QWERTY keyboard. There's a basic 2 megapixel non-flash and non-focusing camera on the back and a customizable application shortcut key on the left hand side, plus mini USB on the, on the bottom and a 2.5mm stereo headset jack. The whole thing is nicely rounded and it feels great in the hand. The problems start when you power up the Windows Mobile standard interface. Unlike previous trios, there's no touchscreen or stylus here, with the familiar Windows Mobile Today screen replaced by a side-scrolling carousel, reminiscent of Nokia's new N-series multimedia carousel, which you'll recall I can't stand. In fairness to Palm and Vodafone, they've tried to create something that's, that's more immediately obvious to a total newcomer. I was immediately put in mind of a, a phrase like, my first smartphone, and a beginner will get on very well with the Trio 500V. Palm say they're aiming it at teenagers, who will also have thinner fingers, which makes sense with this keyboard. As you move left and right, different themed groups of bookmarks and objects appear. Headed message centre, favourite contacts, Upcoming events, my settings, Windows Live, music and video, recent photos, Vodafone Live, all of which make absolute sense in terms of helping a beginner get started, but which totally and utterly bemuse someone used to a previous Windows Mobile, Palm OS or S60 smartphone, which is probably most of you watching. Thankfully the last, or, or the first, seeing as they wrap round, column is simply recent programs. Uh, for a beginner at least, uh, the chances are high that this updated list of 10 applications will nearly always contain the application they need next. As with all Windows Mobile smartphones, applications start slowly but can be switched to quickly once they're running in RAM, they pop up immediately. The main programs folders have been reorganised by Palm 2. You can get to this by pressing the main menu from recent programs or by pressing in the D-pad on the standby screen which is easiest. So far so good then, especially considering that most buyers will get this for free with a £20 a month contract. But I do have to say that the Trio 500 isn't for me, and it's not for most people watching this show, probably. So what didn't I like about it? The Quarter VGA landscape screen really is a terrible fit with Windows Mobile 6, and so many screens have masses of wasted space top and bottom, and with numerous dialogues almost but not quite fitting without needing to scroll up and down. The micro SD card is under the battery, a pet hate of mine. You have to power off and on just to change the card. Unforgivably, as well, there's no camera button. Instead, you have to root around in the application menu, typically taking at least four key presses to do what most smartphones do with one. Beamed in items via Bluetooth, there's no infrared here, uh, appear invisibly in my files with no dialogue asking what to do with them, which was a bit disconcerting. The main standby screen is almost totally non-functional, Unlike every other Windows Mobile and S60 smartphone, there's no way to show upcoming appointments or to kick off favourite applications from shortcuts. So we're back to a phone standby screen being just pretty wallpaper, which is a shame. Although Office Mobile is on the 500V, it's the cut down version with no way to create new documents. You have to use the silly system of opening an existing document and then doing save as instead. Crazy. Ultimately, the Trio 500 is just too limiting for most of us. There's no Wi-Fi. Surely a must in this day and age, 
And another point is that this device really is aimed at the ultra-mobile youth market. He'll get by with just plain 3G. There's no HSDPA here, either 3.5G, but then music and video handling isn't a focus here, and presumably Palm don't see buyers needing to do any large direct downloads. Hi, my name is Craig Loxman with another smartphone show looking into the world of Blackberries. Today we'll be talking about the Blackberry Curve, uh, also known as the 8300 series. Uh, the nice thing with uh, the Curve series is it's a lot smaller and sleeker if you have a look at it here yeah, compared to the other Blackberry models. Uh, if you can remember my last show where we had the 8700 which was a lot bigger. Um, the nice thing with the Curve series is they've also got now built-in GPS. If you have a look at the GPS receiver sits here at the top. Um, there are three models in the Curve range. You get the 8300 which has no GPS or Wi-Fi. You get the 8310 which is this model here which has got the, the GPS in it and then you get the 8320 which has the built-in Wi-Fi. Nice thing with uh, the Curve series is they've now integrated a 3.5mm jack which comes in quite handy for listening to music and videos on your device. Um, and it's also got one gig of memory built into the unit. Uh, well not built in but comes with a memory card uh, of one gig which allows you to use it as a thumb drive to put music on, videos, etc. Also if you have the new desktop manager installed on your PC it will allow you to convert your movies and put them onto the device to actually watch it. The nice thing with uh, the Curve is if you get it through Vodafone affiliates you get a Vodafone application called SatNav. Uh, it's got mapping data and routing uh, provided by Telemap which will also give you the voice guidance and navigation. Um, if you get a Blackberry through other parts of the world it will come pre-installed with Google Maps or come with uh, uh, Blackberry Maps which uses uh, Google Google Maps to get the information. Um, all in all, quite a nice smartphone. It's still got the rollerball in the middle. Uh, you've got your answer end keys on the side. On the side you've got your two convenience keys which you can use to launch any application. Um, pretty soon there's new firmware coming out, version 4.5, which will give you the ability to edit docs. But as of now, still normal Blackberry, you can view stuff but you can't edit. Quite a good smartphone. If you want something that's small, sleek with built-in GPS, recommend the 8310. Thanks. Bye.